Hey everybody, what's up? This is Fuller here. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you've been enjoying the Metasounds 101 videos. This is part four and part three. We talked about some triggers. We talked about the repeat trigger. We talked about the trigger once. We talked about the trigger delay and we also talked about the BPM to seconds node. In this video, in part four, we're going to explore more triggers uh, and get more into what some of the triggers available to us in the Metasounds are and some of the practical uses for their functionality. So let's just dive right in. Okay, so let's open up our Metasound here. I'm gonna just, I've just kind of created this. This is similar to the last ones we've been working on, but I've basically, I have three wave players here. All of these wave players go into a mixer and each wave player has a different assignable sound. If you are not sure how to do that, go back and check out the other videos, part one through three, kind of shows you how to do that. But right now we're just gonna talk about triggers. Okay, so for the first trigger in this video I wanna look at is one of my favorites and is extremely helpful in generative music and stuff like that is the trigger sequence. You can see there's an option to select up to eight sequences. We're just gonna go three. So trigger sequence three. So what this node does is every time it's triggered, it sends an output to the next trigger. So for example, if I do an on play here and I do an out, when I play this, it's just gonna trigger this one time. Now it's gonna start this loop, but it's not gonna do anything else. But if we take this out and we put a repeat on here, which we talked about in our last video. If we do a trigger repeat and then we connect it, what this is going to do, I'm going to change this to 0.5, every half a second it's going to re-trigger this and it's going to send things out in this order from 0, 1, 2, and then it's going to loop because we have it looped checked. Okay, so let me change the sound to a clap. That way we just get one transient sound. Now listen to it. So you can see this trigger is repeating two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So it's outputting here and then it outputs here and here. But since we don't have these connected to anything, you don't hear anything. So if I took this trigger output and put it here and then let's just change this to a hi-hat sound. Now you're going to hear clap, hi-hat, and then it's going to trigger this one, which is not connected. Let's check that out. And if we wanted to complete the process, and let's maybe put on a snare here and connect this to three. Now what this is going to do is trigger this one, two, three, and repeat the sequence. You can also turn the loop off and it'll just do it once. It also has a reset feature here. And then so when this triggers, let's say you had eight of these and you got to three, but then this got reset, it would trigger back to the beginning trigger, which is really cool. Now this may not seem like much, but what it allows us to do, if we wanted to bring this out on a BPM node, BPM to seconds, let's set this at 110. Now when I hit play, it's gonna sequence these out on quarter notes at 110 and I'm going to loop this, so it's gonna reset itself, so it's gonna continually loop these sounds. Where this comes in real handy that I found is when I'm doing random music or generative or some sort of procedural music, but I don't want it to trigger something every time, this is a really easy way to add some space. So if I change this to, let's bring this uh, in, let's say let's bring in six of them. So now we're gonna trigger this. Let's go one, and then let's go two, and then let's say we want a space here, and then let's bring this out to three. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna give us some timing, some space. So it's adding these spaces in time with this trigger. So when this triggers here, it's literally adding space. And what you can do is you can set this up to randomize. And this is a great way to do randomization, but also add random space. 
because if all you have is just quarter notes and eighth notes constantly, that gets fatigue, your ear gets fatigued. So adding random spaces is extremely helpful. Then you could also add a random reset in there so that it resets it at random times. So maybe sometimes it'll skip the second one, sometimes it might do one and two in a row and then go back and then skip the sixth one or whatever. So you can see how this will be really handy. Now let's talk about another trigger called the trigger counter. And what this does is it it's kind of self-explanatory. It allows us to count the number of triggers that are happening. If we wanted to come in here, let's insert the trigger counter here. So now what we can do is, right now we're putting this trigger counter here, and what this is gonna do, it's gonna start counting how many times this is triggered. We're gonna start at zero, and then this little guy right here is gonna keep track of how many times this trigger is uh, happening. And then you can set it here to reset. And what's cool about this, you can then take this reset and tell it to go out here. So let's turn the loop off for. So right now, if I play this, it's going through these five sequences and then it's doing nothing because this sequencer went through five times and now it stopped because we have the loop off. Let's say we want it to restart, not after the fifth one, but after the 10th one. So what we can do is we can use this trigger counter and we can say, okay, as soon as this trigger repeat starts, I want you to start counting from zero. And every time it triggers, I want you to add one to that number. This is the step size. So when it triggers twice, it's gonna add one. When it triggers the third time, it's gonna add one. And it's gonna keep track of that number. So if I set this number to five, that means that on the fifth trigger, it's going to reset and start counting at zero again. But what's cool is when it resets, I can say, okay, do this thing when it resets. So I could send this here and reset this loop. So now watch what happens. Reset. So it's resetting after this fourth trigger because it's counting. So remember this is zero, so it's one, two, three, four, five. So if I change this number to six, it's gonna play through all of these and then it's gonna restart. Now if I change this to 12, it's gonna play through the whole thing twice before it resets. So you'll hear it the first time then it's gonna reset after this one. And now it starts triggering the sequence again. So you can already start to see the complexity of how these nodes can add together to create more and more complex things. You can also keep track of the count. You could use this count to trigger an index. Maybe you say, hey, when this gets to the 10th trigger, trigger the 10th index of this array. Or take this number. When this number is above 20, then I want to trigger this next thing. And this is where things can get really complicated and really cool. So that's the trigger counter used in conjunction with the trigger repeat and the trigger sequence. Let's talk about the trigger control node. If you go here and go trigger control, all we're just doing is adding a bunch of triggers here like Bob Ross painting trees. We're just adding triggers, happy little triggers everywhere we go. What this trigger does is it is basically like a gate. So what this will do, let me unhook these. If I wanna come out of this trigger and go in here and then out to here, essentially, as long as this trigger is open, it's gonna let that pass. So if I hit play now, you're not gonna hear anything. Why? Because it's set to close. So let's uncheck this, and that's gonna open this trigger. It's like a water faucet, basically, a gate. Now, it's gonna just, business as usual, let this flow right through there. And let's loop this so we can hear it repeating. So it's just going through these motions, it's going to the trigger sequence, and it's just doing it all day long. <clears throat> now, What's cool is we could use it in conjunction with this trigger counter. So if we went over here and we added this trigger counter, 
We started at zero, we're counting by ones, and we're gonna tell this after the, let's say, seventh time on the reset, I want you to close this. So what this is gonna do now is after seven triggers, it's gonna close this gate. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, closed. Now you see the gate is closed. And this keeps counting, but it stays closed. Now what you could also do is you could say, let's toggle it. So this is going to close on seven, open on seven, close on seven, open on seven. So let's check this out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, closed. Three, four, five, six, seven, open. Two, three, four. So you can see now with the trigger, the trigger control, you're toggling whether triggers are being open or closed, and you can toggle that with a boolean, like a true false, or you can tog toggle it, it's hard to say toggle, you can toggle that with another trigger happening off a cue point, off a location of a wave, I mean, uh, unlimited things. So you can already start to see how these little building blocks are starting to give us a ton of um, you know options for creating randomization. Let's talk about the trigger filter. The trigger filter, is a sort of a randomization type thing but what it's doing is it's randomizing uh basically a boolean uh here it's called heads or tails so every time this is triggered on heads it's gonna do this and on tails it's gonna do this i don't know let's just say on tails it completely kills the meta sound so when we trigger this it's triggering heads heads head now why is it not triggering tails the seed is negative one which means it's going to be random however probability gives us the ability to skew it one way or another and if you look at this uh trigger will get called zero is always tails one is always head so right now it's always going to do heads and if i do it on zero it's always going to be tails going to kill the meta sound you can see right here it starts to run and then it kills then we can change that so let's go 0.5 what that's going to do that's going to give us a heads tails probability so let's see what happens we started it and then stopped it started it heads heads tails stop so you can see this is a really good filter uh, if you want some randomization but you want uh, kind of a little more control over it uh, so I could say 0.25 that's going to give us 75% tails almost three out of four times it's going to be tails there's a heads and then it goes right to tails uh, if you go 0.75 that's going to give you 75 percent chance of heads and so you can see you can kind of control the probability there so it's pretty useful um you know you're probably not going to use it a ton but it is nice to have when you want to do a kind of a heads tails kind of thing. So that covers a lot of the extra triggers in this video. We're gonna move on to part five and we're gonna finish up our review of some of the awesome triggers in Metasound. So we'll see you in the next video.